I have a very, very special guest here with me. This is the guy. <laughs> So, awkward. so the number one thing when you have a lot of knee valgus like Amanda does, you're gonna make your knees spontaneously combust and explode and never squat again. Don't Just so you guys know the drill for my pre-workout stack. I usually take one scoop of BPN Sup's flight pre-workout. The reason why I like this product so much is because two main ingredients that I usually look for in a pre-workout is caffeine and beta alanine content. Um, there's 300 milligrams of caffeine in here, which is a pretty good amount, as well as 3.2 grams of beta alanine. Beta alanine is going to be that itchy, that tingly factor that's going to get you to want to work out. Half the time, it's the beta content that I'm looking more so for, um, a higher amount of that rather than caffeine. Just because sometimes if I take too much caffeine, I get headaches. So I really, really enjoy like the balance of those two ingredients in this product. This is sour watermelon. I also stack my flight pre-workout with BP and Subs Endo Pump. Um, this is the sour watermelon flavor as well. Pairs super well here. But I did want to mention BPN's newest product which is which is more of an endurance product I guess you could say and that is their G1M Sport. G1M stands for Go One More. This is basically going to be a superior electrolyte drink. So we have both the fruit punch flavor and then lemon lime. I take this during my workouts, I sip on it throughout to kind of give me sustained energy as well as muscle endurance. These taste really, really good. Normally, I would take that powdered Gatorade that you could buy at the store, like the full calorie, um, because half the time, like if I'm not feeling good during a workout, I just don't have enough carbs or sodium in my, or carbs or sodium in my system. So this kind of gives me a quick pick me up. So I'll be mixing up, oh, I'll do, do some fruit punch today. It's a pretty finely milled uh, powder, as you can see, if you can see that. And then like I said, one scoop of flight and one scoop of endo pump before my workout. Definitely go check this out, it's good stuff. Would buy this over Gatorade for sure. It's definitely replaced it totally for me. So basically an essential. <laughs> So today I have my good friend here, actually my current physical therapist. He's the one who keeps me healthy, John Hager. This is the guy. So awkward. <laughs> this is the guy who actually got me into powerlifting. Believe it or not, I had no idea what powerlifting was at the time. What was going through your head when you first met me at the gym? Why? Why did you introduce me to this sport? That's just like so changed my life. Yeah. So I just moved back to the area. Uh, I grew up right around where Amanda lives right now. I was out in PT school out in North Dakota, and then I just came back. Started up at the same gym that I worked out in all through undergrad, and I saw this girl standing there in the squat rack, nonchalantly squatting 225, and I was like. <laughs> What the? No uh, saw her for a couple of workouts, and then probably after about a month of seeing her in the gym, I asked her, I'm like, hey, do you ever like consider doing a powerlifting meet before or anything like that? She had no idea what that was, and you know, I'm like, oh man, this girl's gonna be freaking good. So, um, ended up talking her into doing, uh, it was it twin, twin ports? Twin ports, so mentioned powerlifting to me January 2016. We ended up signing up for a meet together for June 2016. It was in uh, Duluth, Minnesota, twin ports meet. He ended up actually breaking his ankle, I believe, because I didn't want to do a meet alone. I, like, like I said, I knew nothing, nothing about powerlifting, and I was so nervous to go into a meet by myself. But he actually helped coach me through this first meet, and he, Forgot to tell me that going into I didn't it, tell her how strong she was at all. He didn't tell me <laughs> that first meet that I was about to break an American record squat without knowing so, it, the junior record. Yeah, I don't remember what it was way back then, but we were programming her. Uh, I didn't tell yeah. her to go Google things online to say how strong she was, um, but I just kept telling her, hey, man, they're just, just, it's all right, just stick to the numbers, just do, you know, do yeah. the plan, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And then she goes in and he broke, was it squat? Broke the squat, that was it. Squat, that was it yeah. on the first yeah. meet. So, Another question for you. 
in the very beginning, he kind of had me doing a squat every day program he recommended. That's right. He's still currently doing squat every day, which I don't understand. I ended up doing squat every day for four months straight. I've been doing right? it for a couple of years, so. But that's when <laughs> squat was so much, very much so the focus that bench and deadlift weren't a thing. So that's right. why squat sucks. So right, right, right. No, but I couldn't walk for the first two weeks. I don't squat that often now. I went for I went from, week now? went from seven <laughs> to like three, and now I'm down to two. Two days a week. Just because like the heavier yeah. I lift, the more it takes to recover. Right. What do you do now? Where, where are you, what are you working? What are you doing? So I'm a physical therapist. I work in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Um, I treat pro mostly uh, neck pain, back pain, all that kind of stuff. A lot of sports med. Um, yeah. And then I fix Amanda every time that she breaks down. And, and all and all my friends, all our friends. <laughs> When they're broken, you know, go to John, fix, fix me. Yeah, kind of worked me through a lot of different injuries. Um, just to name a few, I guess. Uh, thought I broke my wrist, but didn't. SI. Hamstring, hamstring, oh, yeah, ham. uh, SI, which still flares up here and there. Yeah, we're planning on doing some videos here in the future, maybe some tips that could help you guys. With, of course, help John. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really the expert. I just, I just lift weights, bro. One of the biggest things, I mean, it sounds like when Amanda's listing off all those things that she's gone through um, over the course of her powerlifting career, you know, or injured this, injured that, whatever. When you, when you really stress a system as much as Amanda does, you know, you're going to blow out at your weakest links no matter what. You're always going to have these little nicks, um, you know, little injuries that you get to train around and kind of work your way through. So she's been really, really receptive of doing all the work that I tell her to in terms of rehabbing those injuries and then we're trying to incorporate it within the program that Joey does Joey, for yeah. you. Yeah, the biggest thing is like, once you're lifting at the level that I'm currently at, there's gonna be like little injuries that pile up here and there and it's being able to still work through them, find workarounds, because um, if you just completely stop, someone else is gonna come catch up and pass you up. So that's been a big thing and whatnot. Um, and he's been a massive, massive help. Uh, we do a lot of like, Graston. Graston, I'm dry needling certified. Amanda really doesn't like that at all, but Yo, it's pretty that's sick. scary. You know, that's that's a pretty powerful intervention yeah. that I can do for a lot of yeah. folks with, with acute muscle spasm strain, all those kind of things. Uh, I crack backs and necks and all that stuff too if it's if it's necessary. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the, the strength piece, the corrective exercises, that's our, that's where the meat and potatoes yeah. is if you want to get better at, at your sport, I guess. So. Bruh, this is the only real way to deadlift. Feet basically touching, close grip. You're not a real deadlifter. It's not like this. Look at that. It's almost easier than it was sumo. Actually, that, that's kind of cheating. <laughs> So the number one thing when you have a lot of knee valgus like Amanda does, you're gonna make your knees spontaneously combust and explode and never squat again. A lot of times, so if you look at someone that's just learning how to squat and they have no idea what the hell they're doing, you put a barbell on their back and then they try to get down into a squat position and 99% of the time their knees are gonna cave in. That's that knee valgus uh, kind of angle. And what your body is doing when you get in that position is it's looking for a little bit more support to help you kind of carry that weight. When you look at Amanda, you know, she 
doesn't squat light enough or at least doesn't pulse videos light enough where the valgus isn't apparent. Mm -hmm. um, once you get to a certain threshold, you need a little bit of that knee valgus to kind of rebound and then stabilize your pelvis and your core to get you into a into an upright position and then kind of rebound out of the hole. In Amanda's case, she, she pushes it so hard and then just kind of with the way that her anatomy is, it looks a lot more egregious or aggressive mm -hmm. than, than what it actually does mm -hmm. or than what it actually is. Mm -hmm. Um, and then at the same time, she's also had that for her whole career. So she's kind of conditioned those tendons and ligaments around the, around the knee um, so that she's at, actually at a much lesser risk for injury than your normal folks that are, that are just learning how to squat or work out or those kind of things. Mm -hmm. If you want to make another 100 pounds on your squat, we probably need to correct that a little bit more. Which it has probably, been, yeah, flat. Yeah. has been. Okay. And that's, that's probably your weakest link in your chain. But then as soon as we fix that knee valgus on Amanda, it's gonna be something else that's keeping her back or keeping her from do, doing more weight. You know, it's a it's a big deal for those folks that are untrained. And then especially if it looks uncontrolled, like if they're just all over the place sloppy with their form. Yeah. Um, in Amanda's case, you know, it looks pretty acceptable. Um, not perfect by any means, but definitely mm -hmm. nothing that she really needs to be concerned about from an injury standpoint. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is my first coach, the current Pete, my good friend here, my current.